hearty welcome to the viewers so this is the video lecture series on structural ana analysis in the last two lectures namely lecture number 128 and 129 we have been discussing about static indeterminacy of beams portal frames and pin jointed trusses now in this lecture we will take up kinematic indeterminacy of structures kinematic kinematic indeterminacy of structures so this is lecture number 130 so about me uh, dr perumal former professor and now practicing structural consultant with the sakti civil and structural consultancy private limited in the koyamuthur regional office vadavalli koyamuthur 41 right <coughs> now com coming to kinematic indeterminacy kinematic indeterminacy refers to the number of possible joint displacements point possible joint displacements or possible degrees of freedom so here Uh, again we need uh, the discussion on this very briefly so hinged joint will have one degree of freedom one degree of freedom or a yeah, rotation is possible the displacement possible in a hinged support is that of the rotation one degree of freedom or one release whatever you call right now in a hinged sub roller support a roller support is free to move along the plane of rollers and also it is free to rotate so it has got two degrees of freedom or two releases or two displacements are possible we are going to deal with number of possible displacements at joints so here in a roller support or roller joint we have two possible displacements coming to a fixed support no displacement is possible it cannot move in the horizontal direction cannot move in the vertical direction and also it is not free to rotate the effect of fixing is to make the end slope to be equal to zero therefore no degree of freedom here right now and one more point and here in the case of a free end of an overhang free end of an overhang Uh, because if some sometimes uh, what is the uh, kinematic indeterminacy of a cantilever means at the fixed end there will be no degree of freedom whereas at the free end it is free to undergo a vertical displacement and also it is free to rotate therefore a cantilever is statically indeterminate but kinematically indeterminate so two displacements are possible at the free end at the free end right now Uh, this is a member this is a member and if uh, some rollers are given between two plates like this between two plates like this now the two parts of this member is allowed to undergo vertical displacement vertical displacement and here this a member between these two between these two if horizontal rollers are provided then it allows horizontal displacement horizontal displacement alone is uh, permitted permitted and uh, coming to this is a member suppose if we introduce a hinge at a point in the member then it is allowed to only rotate okay, because sometimes in members uh, they give a roller like this you have to understand that it is allowed to undergo vertical displacement because we are going to count the number of possible displacements so there uh, for some calculation this will be useful this knowledge will be useful now here suppose if it is completely cut all displacements are possible vertical displacement is possible horizontal displacement is possible and also it is permitted to rotate right now in the case of a proper cantilever proper cantilever kinematic indeterminacy refers to the number of possible 
joint displacements are unknown joint displacements in the structure are unknown displacements at joints in the structure joints in the structure now here it's a proper cantilever here it is fixed no displacement is permitted here it is a roller a roller is permitted to undergo displacement along the plane of rollers namely a horizontal displacement is possible and also a rotation is possible therefore uh, this is kinematically and it will to 2 degrees but actually the horizontal displacement being negligibly small moreover it is fixed here therefore only the rotation is considered only the rotation is considered even though there are two degrees of freedom ignoring the horizontal displacement we allow only rotation here the case of a proper cantilever here so it is what two degrees with the horizontal displacement one degree without horizontal displacement so these are all certain things which you have to be very careful because uh, what what is expected you have to clearly understand and answer or you can clearly say that uh, uh, with the horizontal displacement it is 2 degrees kinematically and determinate without horizontal displacement it is 1 degree that is very specific nobody can question you right so here it is a proper cantilever suppose there is a hinge proper cantilever then rotation is permitted k i equal to 1 suppose if it is a cantilever cantilever now a cantilever is free to undergo i think i am just uh, conveying things correctly i think i have not made any mistake anyway uh, vertical displacement is possible and rotation is possible rotation is possible so 2 degrees a cantilever is kinematically indeterminate to 2 degrees two displacements are possible at the free end right because why i am discussing this is sometimes they will give you a portal frame even in the competitive examination in the gate examination they are given some two story portal frame and they are given an overhang so we have to carefully count the displacements at the free end otherwise it will be a confusion right so ki equal to or two vertical displacement and rotation right now coming to uh, definition is already discussed kinematic indeterminacy of a structure means the number of unknown joint displacements or displacements at joints in a structure and a joint means this doubt will be there it is a free end it is not a joint because i myself have confused uh, quite for some time to understand this and after uh, and after going through the answers given in the gate book and also after a discussion with my senior author dr vidyanathan sir i could understand that these also are to be counted right now coming to uh, we will uh, discuss the determination of kinematic indeterminacy of a few structures now a fixed beam sorry a beam two span continuous beam with fixed end roller support and hinged support here even though it is inclined to force here it is fixed and here it is hinged it cannot undergo a horizontal displacement therefore ki equal to 2 theta b and theta c only here no displacement right because of these two supports this cannot undergo horizontal displacement so k the possible joint displacements are theta b is possible theta c is possible now coming to the second one now here uh, right uh, theta a is possible theta b theta c and theta d this structure is kinematically indeterminate to 4 degrees theta a theta b theta c theta d because in the matrix stiffness method or slope deflection method suppose if this problem is given this can be easily solved because it is kinematically indeterminate to only 2 degrees theta b and theta c are possible you have to solve 
a 2 by 2 equation and you can easily do it. Suppose if a problem of this type is given, there are four unknown, four unknowns, you have to form four equations and solve four equations. It's a difficult problem. So it starts with the kinematic indeterminacy. On seeing the problem, finding out the kinematic indeterminacy, you have to uh, choose the problem when solving. So, right, uh, the other, we can choose this or this, why and all these things will have to be clear. Kinematic indeterminacy four means uh, it's very tedious, very lengthy problem. Now here it is kinematically determinate. No displacement possible here. No displacement possible here. This structure is statically indeterminate, but kinematically it is determinate. Kinematically it is determinate. Now coming to this structure, coming to this structure, uh, this problem is again attractive uh, for examiners. Say matrix stiffness method or slope deflection method. So in our books we have solved these problems also. Stepped beam stepped fixed beam. So here A is fixed, B is fixed, we are dealing with the unknown joint displacements, then how? C is considered as a joint. C is permitted to undergo a vertical displacement, a vertical displacement is possible and also a rotation is possible. Delta C, vertical displacement and theta C is possible. So this structure is kinematically indeterminate. So we should not assume that it is kinematically indeterminate and the problem is not relevant. It is to be considered. Theta C and delta C, it is kinematically indeterminate to 2 degrees. Here we need a bother of uniform section. Right. Now coming to this, it is a simply supported beam. We know that a simply support beam is a statically determinate structure. Whereas, there will be a rotation here, there will be another rotation here. Theta A and Theta C are possible. So, even though the structure is statically determinate, it is kinematically indeterminate. There are two displacements possible at the supports. So, kinematically indeterminate. Kinematic indeterminacy of a simply support beam is two theta A and theta B. Coming to this portal frame, portal frame, this is statically indeterminate, kinematic, kinematically also indeterminate. Here theta B is possible, theta C is possible and theta B and theta C, there will be rigid body rotation. If uh, the Remember, BA undergoes a rotation of theta, BC will also undergo the same rotation. So, rigid joint, it is a rigid jointed structure. So, at B, BA and BC will undergo the same rotation. So, that is rigid body. Theta B is possible, theta C is possible because of the loading. And the loading is unsymmetrical. Therefore, a side sway is possible. The member will be subjected to, here the loading is from left to right. So, it will sway to the right delta. BC will become B dash C dash after the defect. A side sway is possible. So, therefore, this kinematic indeterminacy of this structure is 3, theta B, theta C and delta. Now, here, theta B is possible. Theta C is possible. So, even AB, BC and CD are assumed of uniform section. Supports are Unsymmetrical. So here it is fixed, here it is hinged. Therefore, theta B is possible, theta C is possible, theta D is possible, and also delta side sway is possible. So the kinematic indeterminacy of the structure is 4. If you want to solve this structure by slope deflection or matrix stiffness method, we have to form four equations, solve 4 by 4 equations. So it will be a lengthy problem. lengthy problem. Now coming to this, theta A, A is fixed, theta B is possible, theta C is possible, theta D is possible, theta D is possible and suppose there is a horizontal force extra and delta D is also possible. It, the support delta, I mean the joint del, uh, D 
will undergo movement to the right or to the left depending upon the load. So, delta D is possible. Horizontal displacement is possible. Whereas, sway is not possible. If there is unsymmetric loading or unsymmetric in the geometry, it is likely to undergo sway, but uh, it is hinged here. C is hinged. Therefore, lateral sway is not possible. Delta is not possible. So, theta B, theta C, theta D and delta D. Horizontal moment of the support D is possible. So, it is kinematically indeterminate to 4 degrees. Now, coming to this structure. So, A is fixed. So, here theta B is possible. Theta B means uh, it will be a rigid body rotation. Theta is possible. Theta B. Uh, that is, remember B A, B E and B C will undergo the same rotation. Theta B is possible. Theta C is possible. Theta D is possible. Theta E is possible. 4. Uh, theta F is possible. 5. 5. And uh, because of the hinge here, sway is not permissible in CD. Whereas, the member BF, BE will undergo lateral sway. Lateral sway. That is, uh, it will bend like this. Bend like this. This will undergo side sway. So, theta B, theta C, theta D, theta E, theta F and delta BE. Side sway at the level BE. These are the uh, so, therefore, it is kinematically indeterminate to uh, 6 degrees. Uh, this is what I told. Uh, uh, in complete examination, they give an example like this. So, assuming the kinematic indeterminacy definition, we uh, will not treat this as a joint, that has to be treated as a joint. Therefore, as we have discussed earlier, delta E is possible and theta E is also possible. Therefore, the possible displacements are theta b, theta c, theta d, then theta f, theta g, theta g, and at e, delta e and theta e, and at bf level, at this level, uh, delta, the sway will be uh, for CDE, CDE as a whole will undergo displacement, BF will undergo lateral displacement. Right now, coming to this, we will count theta B 1, theta C 2, theta D 3, theta 4 F, theta G 5. Then here, vertical displacement and rotation 7. Sway of BF 8, sway of CDE as a whole, as a whole it will move to the right. So 9, the kinematic independence of this is 9. Now coming to this, uh, we can go fast now. Uh, theta A is possible, theta B, theta D 1 or 2, theta B 2, 3, theta C, theta 4, this is 4, 5 and the side sway. Side sway is uh, 6. That is B, C, D as a whole will undergo displacement to the right or left. That is 6. Now here you can say uh, it is 10. Actually 10 means uh, theta D 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, there are only hinges, 8, then the sway of GHI, 9, sway of DEF, 10. So that is about the kinematic indeterminacy. Now here, theta B, theta C, and delta. This will undergo because of uh, roller support and it is free. So it will undergo horizontal displacement also, theta B, theta C, and delta. Uh, this is one only. Here it is fixed. Here it is fixed. Theta B only. Uh, if such a problem is given in uh, slope deflection or matrix difference method, you can very easily solve. There is only one unknown. You can very easily solve.
normally they will not go for 3 degrees even 3 can be solved 2 is ideal anyway let us not go deeper beyond this right now coming to this theta b is possible theta c is possible so these are fixed and it will undergo lateral displacement delta delta here theta b theta c and delta delta is possible and here uh, theta b so what is being given in slope deflection with that theta b theta c and theta d because of the fixed support it cannot undergo the horizontal displacement cannot undergo horizontal displacement so this roller is free to undergo horizontal displacement because of this we are not going to consider the axial displacement therefore uh, delta is not considered here so theta b theta c it is 3 degrees kinematically in it to the end now coming to this coming to this this is a rigid join so it's a truss it's a truss cantilever truss now vertical displacement is possible horizontal displacement is possible because the members will undergo axial compression or axial tension deformation shortening or elongation is possible so all these members will undergo different elongations uh, therefore Vertical displacement is possible, horizontal displacement is possible, therefore kinematic endowment is equal depending upon the axial deformations of the individual members, vertical and horizontal displacements are possible. Now coming to this, in a pin joint, we know this joint will undergo two displacements, x direction and y direction. Limited to x and y directions. We are considering a two dimensional structure. So, horizontal displacement at B is possible, vertical displacement at B is possible. These are all hinged, 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 hinged. They will not undergo any displacement. Only two displacements are possible. Therefore, the structure is kinematically indeterminate to 2 degrees. Now, coming to this, it is hinged here this joint will undergo two displacements vertical direction and horizontal direction depending upon the loading horizontal vertical displacement and also this is permitted to undergo horizontal displacement because it is placed on rollers suppose if this axial member ac is at a tension it will it will be subjected to elongation suppose if this is in a compression it will be subjected to shortening the joint c will move to the right so two displacements here and one displacement here therefore this structure is kinematically indeterminate to 3 degrees, three degrees. now this structure uh, all these joints now this is hinged this is hinged other than these two we have got four joints b c d and f each pin joint will undergo two displacements horizontal and vertical therefore the kinematic indeterminacy of the structure is Eight. Eight. So that's about uh, finding out the degree of static and the kinematic independency of different structures because uh, static independency already we have discussed and uh, matrix flexibility method and other methods. Other methods it may not be specifically mentioned but uh, we start with only static independence whereas uh, matrix stiffness method as well as slope deflection method starts with the uh, kinematic independence the number of unknowns what are the unknowns you have to take in order you have to just give some number and proceed anyway that is something about kinematic independence structures and this will also be useful for uh, competitive examinations like gate etc and also interviews on this level and uh, only when an individual possesses knowledge on how to find out the degree of static and kinematic indeterminacy, we will be able to solve problems and also uh, face uh, competitive examinations and also interviews. So, uh, thank you viewers for the kind 
patience thank you all thank you